Look, here we have a simple example of a Revit file defined by us, and here's your stuff. Well, I separated the structural elements, one visualization and the other. To get to this visualization, first of all, I'm going to show you some implementation criteria in terms of administration and management systems, which what they actually do is delay the administrative procedure and plan communication. Here I had to touch element by element or categorize, uh, not the doors, not the windows, maybe the roofs, neither. Every non-structural element and with a lot of work uh, arrived to this visualization to see everything that has a structural nature. If you take a look here on this part where I click uh, the right button and says view template, this is a visualization criteria. Notice that here it only says this one and this other. There's not even in the files root predefined. What is a visualization criteria? Take a look over here. If I have several mixed things, this visualization criteria applies over and over. Never mind the project's importance. Take a look, for instance. I'm going to apply a view template and visualization criteria where it only says a wall aspect and it leaves me with only a criteria which I can turn on and off in an automatic way. The structural aspect is this one. The structural aspect without the stairs or slabs is this one. The 3D architectural aspect is this one. So this has to do with a huge amount of time wasted when the management and visualization procedures are known. These are useful to apply this implementation manual uh, where one wants to get to the end, leaving a clear path for everyone left to use. This can be one aspect, uh, there are hundreds of them, but I'm going to take into account some elements that are useful to help clarify the question and maybe increase the number of things uh, for you to take into consideration. This is one subject. The other one is the conceptual issue of what a beam is for. Uh, look at this case where the structural and generic constructive aspects are mixed up. For instance, if you look at this, everything is unjoined and here it wasn't defined in one hand the slab and on the other the subfloor, carpet, uh, vapor barriers and other finishes. Uh, therefore, it doesn't follow a constructive process. So if you take one element, so for example this one here, I'm going to isolate it uh, so we know the, what we are talking about. Take a look. Actually, in its constitutive nature, its composition, this element has the reinforced concrete part and also the subfloor carpet, etc. part. Uh, therefore, you can't divide one thing from the other. So if this subfloor is built and I keep track of it, it's all the same element. You can see it has one generic constructive nature, but not from the beam's utilization point of view. It is also subpartitioned to apply the different finishing types to each one of these elements. This is actually not done this way, because if you want to keep track of the balcony's floors or the interior floors with Navis work to create the 4D, you can't get it done because it is all only one element. Notice that this affects directly the entire project it makes us undo this and to redo it with this particular criteria you asked for. I mean, if I have to define which ones are constructed, which ones are not, or define them by type, in this case I won't be able to do it because everything is joined. This is another aspect. There are then other aspects that are related to the project's tracking. Uh, look at this column. This column is not contracted from this floor to this one. This has a construction criteria by levels. So how do you keep track of this element? If it goes from the base to the top, it doesn't have this beam criteria of later getting connected to create the 4D. Therefore, we have to redo it. And there are also other aspects here related to the elements, duplication and overlapping. I'm going to show you only one. This case is full of them. If I point this and this, take a look, uh, this one is completely inside this concrete base. Therefore, here there is an important duplication of cubic meters between one thing and the other. Uh, when we actually have to separate them, we have to play with Revit, so this element with this other can understand that one is 
node inside the other. And with a few actions, we can make this one get cut by this other. This is what we have to do in this entire project. To do this, we set up an example for you to see, uh, which I try to make as concise as possible. I'm going to pause to open everything. The idea is to show you this. Uh, look, this is an extraction of Quintino with its corresponding schedule. Look at how the values are going to change as I fix how these elements should go. Look at this beam with these values. 0.228. When you submit this beam to this process, it should actually go through the different procedures between this beam and this other. See how these values change. Uh, when I define that these elements are joined or related to one another, the values will start changes because it doesn't count the concrete's duplication, but it has to do with this project's tracking and how you are going to build it because this element is effectively emptied by this other. Notice that if by any reason I take it out, you can see that it is actually empty while you have it in this way, and it is really hard to track it later. Look at this, uh, there is no connection between these two elements, which is what we also have to fix. Now, this process of joining elements together, if one does not have the correct policies or manual, but you actually have the chance uh, of doing it automatically. I'm going to close this schedule, and I want you to concentrate here in this example. Look at this. These are the same elements, the columns with the beams. Look at these beams, and look at the computation. This element over here is that element there. The one highlighted in blue, these are the concrete columns. Look at how the values are going to change when I move one element into another. Look, this one is complete, and this one starts getting this one, and by itself generates the void and automatically subtracts the material. These are hours and hours of editing, which you don't have to do because it was anticipated that this would happen. It's common that structural elements have to be joined and that one prevails the other, and that one eats the other's mass to not generate duplications. But if you have the task to fix this and maintain the attention and keep track over this, what I do directly is create administrative policies that are related uh, with this documentary and computational aspect for that to be done automatically. And it doesn't matter the object's material, I can put it whichever I want. Maybe one person can say, yeah, but this happens because both of them are concrete elements with different types of concrete. So here I put this in sample, where this one is grass and in this one type of grass, and it generates the same thing. It doesn't matter which material it is. Therefore, this matters in all of this organization, management, and administration aspects have to be covered before generating any type of beam, because if not, we're not generating a beam. We're just creating a three-dimensional drawing. This is one part which I wanted to talk about, uh, and now I want to show you this and its connection with one of the things you were asking for about the graduated cylinder and where the graduated concrete is going to. This aspect uh, to be covered is which one of these structural elements is associated with or subject to a graduated cylinder. So this is a visualization, uh, which of course you can go to a particular sheet, generate a GWF, generate a calculation schedule for that visualization. I mean, with a clear objective, you can generate clear policies. Each one of these structural elements, if this only affects the structural elements, uh, 
now has a property that, has, that says graduated. This aspect of graduation can have a lot of characteristics. We can define the characteristic tension of that graduated cylinder, uh, who the supplier is, the date, etc. We can track everything we need. This is needing all of these intentions to keep track of it. But in this aspect, uh, taking this as an example, this already knows that it has uh, to turn blue for you to see graphically. And this, of course, can be generating every schedule needed. Now, the important thing about this, apart from this aspect, is the connection with the 4D and the connection with Navis works uh, to generate clashes and to continue with the object's construction. To do this, I'm going to try to explain to you that element there uh, is related to this element here. Uh, here we have something called graduated, which is purpose follows the same characteristics uh, than Revit. It's worth saying that if I now close this, and this is now a different person in another computer in another place, and in Revit, I do the following. I tell the program that now all of this was graduated. It has a property. And then I save the project. And then save it again in Navis. I'm going to pause a few seconds video to not delay it. The export will be generated in the same file. So it remains the communication between one file or process with the other. Now the selection criteria to put it into words change it. Now you just export in the same file, overwriting it, and when I open it from the other side, I don't have to select it again. This works the same way as when I applied view template to select the structural elements, wall aspect, carpentry aspect, or whichever aspect I want to define. This is an aspect, a visualization and selection criteria, which has to be concurrent with Revit, because if not, you create again duplications. So take a look now. When I open again Navy's work and open this project, Quintino Boca Yuba, and tell the program, OK, tell me now which are the graduated elements. And I see that now all of this is graduated. I can then isolate these elements to see only the things I want to see. I'm following visualization criteria here. This is really important and it is what we should try to make compatible with different work groups. And it is what is generally affects uh, the work groups, because well, we may think we know a product completely and actually know only the drawings, like in AutoCAD, where people may know the ways of drawing, but not the organization and management procedures. Now, this is one thing. On the other hand, we are now going to generate the 4D. What we did here was simply create a gun chart This is a basic thing only to explain you this. This gun has to be in total relation with the selection groups you are going to use in Revit and in Navis work. So directly here in this timeliner section, that gun is linked uh, with this matter. Therefore, this Gantt I'm seeing here is the exact same Gantt I had over there. And any change created on the other part is, of course, transferred to this one here. This is a matter that is completely predefined, and these selection groups correspond to these selection groups over here. One thing is attached to the other. From here, I can generate a Gantt, or I can create from the Gantt the automatic association. What this Gantt is going to generate is this visualization or construction simulation that has to do with this visualization one does from the constructive aspect. We can pause any time and see where we are going, where the technology is heading, every element associated, whether they are from project, from Revit, from CAD, from Navis work. 
they are actually responding to this organization management, visualization, control, computing, 4D, 5D, all the budgeting part criteria, and the 6D aspect, which is uh, the facilities management. Well, this was just to say a few more things concerning our meeting the other day, and a few others in particular of what we're going to need to start doing in the Quintino Boca Yuva project. Uh, well, I send you a hug and we are open to any type of explanation or clarification needed towards these matters. Goodbye.